the displacement along that mass, along yeah, along that force. If you got the uh, position vector of each mass in terms of your cubes, and then differentiate to get this dr, you will have your dr in terms of d cubes. So you can write this exact equation as summation j equals one to little n now. Little n is the number of cubes, number of degrees of freedom, little cubes. Each dr will be written as something in dq. So dq j. With some coefficient. This coefficient we're going to call it large q. This would be, we call it the generalized force. <coughs> so uh, this is not complicated. Let's see. Maybe, yeah, Let, let's get, say, R2 here, R of the mass 2, okay? What's R2 as a vector? Well, it's the x1 plus L sine theta, correct? You're going to write your, all your R's, R's in terms of your Q's at the beginning. This actually what we've been doing in neutron mechanics. You select some degrees of freedom at the beginning and you live with them. Write every position vector in terms of these guys. Okay, so here is R2 in the i direction plus, or actually negative, L of cosine theta in the j direction. Correct? So get dr, please. So here is dr is dx1 plus L of cosine theta d theta in the i direction plus L of sine theta d theta in the j direction, right? So your dr here is written now in terms of dx and d theta, okay? d cubes. So if you do any dot product or any force with this guy, you'll have something times dx and something times d theta. This something times dx is the generalized force corresponding with dx. And this something times d theta is the generalized force corresponding with d theta. So from this definition, we have actually QJ is partial W partial QJ. The generalized forces here coming from your work function. We're going to talk about that later in more detail, but if you have any questions, please come up with it. In this regard, I'd like to classify our forces very meticulous classification. Let's talk about that. We have something called monogenic force. You know what do you mean by monogenic? What does it mean? Monogenic means it comes from a single origin. Okay? So uh, here your forces so comes from a scalar function. This is what you mean by monogenic. You can now imagine this scalar function is the potential, right? But so far we're calling it the work function. It comes from a scalar <coughs> function. That. Okay. So simply your QJ is partial. W partial beta QG. Over there we have polygenic force. So something that doesn't come from a scale. This guy can be classified as conservative and not conservative. And actually the same here. 
conservative and non-conservative. This is a little bit confusing because previously or coming from your undergrad you think that anything coming from a, a scalar function, potential function, is already conservative and, and vice versa. If something that doesn't come from a potential is it's immediately non-conservative. It's a little bit confusing. No, it's not the case. Let's talk about it now. We can have forces that do not come from potential, do not come from any scalar function, yet they are conservative. By conservative here we mean they conserve energy. What is a very uh, rare example for that is the friction force that maintains rolling without slipping. So rolling without slipping. Why is that? Because this is workless. So it doesn't produce any work. Friction typically produces a negative work on your system, right? It opposes your motion, produces a negative work. But this guy in particular, the friction force that maintains rolling without slipping, because the relative velocity is zero, then this force is workless, doesn't produce any work. So whenever you have, whatever energy you had at the beginning, it remains the same, it conserves energy. Yet, of course, this is a friction force, it doesn't come from a potential, okay? So this is an important distinction, it's, it's a very slight distinction. And this is the branch that we use to any typical force, I mean, when I just pull this guy here up and down, this is my non-conservative force, which is which doesn't come from a potential. This is any default force. Okay. Over here, if your work function is a function of Q's, is a function of position and velocity, whenever I have uh, underscore under line like this, I mean this is an array. It's not a scalar thing. It's q1 up to qn, q1 dot up to qn. <coughs> but also as a function of time, whenever you have dependence on time, you lose conservation of energy immediately. So if your work function is a function of time, you lose conservation of energy. So although sometimes we have forces derived from scalar work functions that depend on time, so it derives from a scalar function, this is a monogenic force. But because we have dependence on time, we lose conservation of energy. One example is the Lorentz. Again, these are rare in nature. We are very used to the extremes. This extreme, monogenic and conservative, polygenic and non-conservative, right? But there are some subtle differences. The Lorentz electromagnetic force. is derivable from a scalar work function that depends on time. So you lose conservation of energy, but it's monogenic. Actually, we didn't finish the, uh, the classification yet. So here we remove the time. Step to other things. Here the dependence on Q and Q dot it's only a function of Q, this is the case that we really use too, right? Our work is just function of position, and then we call this change in the work, or your work done, I'm sorry, is simply negative the potential. And in this case, your generalized force, or your force is simply negative partial V, partial letter Q shape. This is indeed the case that we use to that you have a potential function of position only. So you have a potential function of position, just differentiate each, differentiate your potential. It's a single scalar function. Differentiate this magic quantity with any degrees of freedom. Any degree of freedom, you get the corresponding force. This is what we used to. Of course, this is conservative. Of course, this is monogenic. This is what we used to the other extreme. But there, this extreme and this extreme. There are some uh, slight rare examples in the middle. Any question about this taxonomy? Any question, please? Yes? Uh, could you please explain once more what is monogenic and what is polygenic? 
Say again, please. Could you please explain one more? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Monogenic force means, well, monogenic force means so uh, let me let me just finish this. Okay. This is partial W partial QG. It's like here. Or whenever you have dependence on Q dot of time, we need to account for that. This is the new rule for it. Partial W partial Q G dot. Okay, let's see. Do you see this equation? This green equation or this blue equation or this blue equation, any equation I write here that relates Q, large Q, to the work function. This W, this V is just single function, just single function. From this single expression, you get all your forces. This is QJ. It's not a single one. It's N composed, N force. You get all your forces, all your forces from a single scalar function. This is not, this should not be the default case, right? This is special case. So here, it's a special case. What's the special case? Is that you can back up all your forces from a single scalar function. Sometimes we have these kind of situations, right? When we only have spring forces, gravitational forces, and these kind of conservative forces, okay? Polygenic is that you simply lose this privilege. Your forces cannot be derived from scalar functions. This is the main difference between monogenic and polygenic. Usually, we associate monogenic with conservative. We think that every monogenic force that comes from a scalar is conservative. I'm saying here that no, there is a slight difference. Any question? Any question, please? Yeah, okay. So now we're experts on this. Um, for uh, the example for rolling without slip, slipping, your uh, your force is still like based on uh, mass, like mass times uh, the gravitational force or something, right? Because you have the normal force from supposedly the you know, and that derives uh, the friction. So uh, how does that not come from one uh, single? The friction? Yes. Yeah, this is the thing. Can you come? I mean, this is actually, you know these things? It's complicated. How can you do this? The thing is, you come up with the force first and try to come up with an expression for W such that when you substitute in any of these equations, you get the force back. So can you do the same with the friction? You have a friction force that is negative mu times n, right? This is your friction force. And actually, in the direction, if you want to write this force, so this is in the direction of your velocity. It's a very bad expression. Can you come up with a work function that, such that when you differentiate with respect to the position, you get this guy? Differentiate with every direction. Differentiate with x, you get the x component here. Differentiate with y, you get the y component here. Differentiate with z, you get the z component here. It's, it's not. So the friction force obviously doesn't come from a from a single scalar function. Okay. The only postulate in analytical mechanics. What is the main Postulate or assumption in Newtonian mechanics. Anybody remember what's the main assumption? What's the main assumption in Newtonian mechanics? Linear momentum is conserved. What? Linear momentum is conserved. Conserved? Uh, basic, it's not, it's basic. Not conserved. Uh, linear momentum is the basic quantity. The people to make, right? It's, I mean, it's close enough, but it's not conserved. We're saying the rate of change of linear momentum is the force. This is an assumption. Okay, in Newtonian mechanics, and you have to accept it if you want to solve your dynamics problem. Here we have, you have to have an assumption in either branch. The assumption here is much more benign and much more acceptable to me, at least you can see it in a, in a moment. The only postulate in analytical and 
Mechanics is constraint forces are workless. Constraint forces do not really produce any work. To me, this is much more acceptable than F equals MA. Okay, there is no proof for this guy, but it's very intuitive, is that you have any, like I was discussing, you have mass here that is moving in the x direction, so uh, you have a normal force, right? This is the constraint force. It's always perpendicular to your motion, so it doesn't produce any work. You have a pendulum that is moving along this tangential <coughs> direction, and here is the normal force, Again, it's perpendicular to your motion. Actually, the role of the constraint force is to make it make you move along that direction. And how does it do? How does it do its job? <coughs> By providing a force perpendicular to the motion, right? This is the thing. I want to I want you to move exactly in this direction, which means I want you not to have any component in any perpendicular to that direction. So I'm gonna exert the force perpendicular to that direction to prevent this from happening, right? So by definition, any constraint force should be perpendicular to your motion. Consequently, it should be workless. Okay? So, yes, we did not find any situation in life that refutes or contradicts this argument, but this does not prove that it's correct, right? It's not mathematically proved. So this is why we're saying it's still postulated. But to me, like I said, it's much more convincing than F A equals M A. Okay? Any question? So the definition of constraint force is perpendicular to motion? Yeah. But isn't that, I mean, how can that? How can that? I mean, and, and also the force is a definition, the definition of the force is equal to F A equals M A. So let's define the force to be mass times acceleration. Any question? So uh, if you accept this fact, then Let's now write down the first principle in analytical mechanics, which is the principle of virtual work. Is that at equilibrium, so we're applying it only at equilibrium, there is no motion yet. I'm still leaving mechanics here. The virtual work, we're going to talk about that in a, in a minute, the virtual work, due to 